What's up, everybody? Sight School. Here we are, another session. Hope everybody out there is staying safe, staying healthy. Hope you're wearing your mask, doing your due diligence as we continue to traverse through these times right now. But looking forward to today's episode. What's up, Joe? Man, what's going on? Hey, this is going to be another good one. It's going to be fun. And yeah, we got my man Mark fun. Keith back again. What's going on, Keith? Hey, let's get it. I'm ready. Always ready. Always ready. But one of the things that has really been on my mind recently is just this idea of outsiders and some people within the general public who feel like individuals with a blindness or individuals with blindness or, or a visual impairment, they don't care about their image or like how they dress and, and all of those things. And so I feel like we need to go ahead and set the record straight. I know the three of us have our perceptions and perspectives on it. But I know a lot mm -hmm. of other people who are blind and visually impaired out there feel similarly. So first to put it out there, as individuals who are, are blind and visually impaired, do you fellas care about how you look? Man, I'm going to tell you straight up, I most definitely care about how I look because I feel like that's one of the few things that I can control. I can control how, I'm, how I present myself and take myself out into public. But that also allows me to have a level of confidence that nobody can take away from me. Because if you feel, you know, if you feel good and you look good, nobody can take that away from you, regardless of what they, the words that they use to, to describe you. You know deep down, no, nah, that's not true. But I'm going to tell you who the expert in this conversation is. Man, that's Marquis. That's yeah. MP. MP, tell him, man. Uh, hey, man, I definitely, uh, I definitely like to look good. I like to be fresh, you know, fresh to death. Um, I always am wondering, wondering about my appearance, making sure that I'm looking good, making sure that I'm presentable. And, um, yeah, you know, I got my degree in uh, family consumer science with a concentration in fashion merchandising. So design and those certain looks is definitely something that I'm all about. I think that so, I mean, that's a really good point, too. To note that, so Mark Keith has the, the expertise. This is what he studied in, in college. So did it come from like your, like your background, like your, your upbringing or your families or your parents? Like, Hey, you need to make sure that you're looking a certain type of way because you always hear about, you hear about first impressions and they are certainly true. You go into a, a job interview or, Let's say you're going on a first date or whatever. People take into account all of those things, I feel like. And so from the blind and visually impaired perspective, I feel like even from my angle, I think that it's still important. If I'm going to to go in for a job interview, I'm trying to make sure my shirt is pressed. It's looking nice. Got my <laughs> got my slacks on. Got some nice hey. shoes. It even it even having some people who can give you that that good look look down. Up and down, yeah, you yeah, yeah. The door. Especially hey, for me being totally blind, right? Because you want somebody to tell you, like, nah, I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the route we need to go today. Yes. You, know, yes. you, need, so you need, and you need somebody to be honest and say, man, let's switch that up a little bit. And, and just to have like a disclaimer, I don't want it to seem like this is an episode where we just on here boasting and bragging. This is something that we really take to heart. We we are very concerned about you know, our appearance, because we have so many other things that that are obstacles. You know, people are going to ask, already have an assumption of who we are, what our character is, you know, the things that we can and can't do just because we're visually impaired. So this is just another thing. You know, we talk about a toolbox. This is just another tool that you carry around in that box with you every day. Absolutely. So, so I think for no, me, I think for me, um, the question that was asked, I think you said like, well, did I like, did we, did you grow up like because of the family or whatever it may be? I know for me, 
my mom, she always made sure to let me know, like, hey, make sure you, you're presentable. Make sure you're looking good. You know, mm-hmm. you never know who's going to see you. And so um, for me to get into that when I was, like, younger, like, really, it was probably some of that. But then I've always been a creative person. So I always, like, even though, yes, I'm visually impaired, I have, I'm I'm able to see color. And so for me, um, I was always gravitating towards different colors or like even like the simplest co- like color combination or like the most complex complex color combination. And so for me, that's what kind of like got me into wanting to like get into the fashion. But now I kind of look at it as just design as a whole. Um, when it comes to colors, music, all of that stuff, like because of the creation. But at the end of the day, you know, everyone needs to like, you know, you know, that that first appearance, like you said, like when you're coming outside or whatever and, you know, you're trying to be presentable, your how you dress is is how people are going to perceive you. So, you know, um, I think it's important for us in the, in the uh, blind and visually impaired community to to know, like, you know, like what what's going on, you know. Like what? What are we like? How are we presenting in front of other people? Exactly. You got to ask somebody, and you can say, "Hey," because we ain't, we're not talking about wearing. We ain't talking about wearing name brands, right? You don't have to be the most. Your clothes don't have to be the most expensive, but there needs to be an understanding of what's presentable. Understand the environments that you're going in. You know, ask somebody if you can't see. Ask someone, well, "What? What should I wear to a job interview?" You know, what should I wear when I'm going to work if this job doesn't have a, quote, a certain uniform or something like that or just mm-hmm. ask and understand the difference between casual dress and, and, and formal dress you know that's the yeah. only way you're going to find out but then make sure that you're in those those spaces that you occupy your appearance matches those spaces you know if you're going to work out you're not going to wear a suit <laughs> and, then, and, and the same thing right. if you're going if you're going to a job interview you're not going to show up in sweatpants yeah right I, I ain't even gonna lie. I know sometimes when when I go down to the track to train, sometimes I'll throw on just whatever. And yeah, given yeah. that envi- given that environment though, you you know that you are down there with your teammates, with your coach. Nobody's going to be measuring your they're, they're not gonna be measuring your appearance mm-hmm. at that particular time. You're just out there trying to work. I mean, I've been out there before with uh you know, I had a, a black sock and a white sock on, like. Um, <laughs> and, and, but you're not going. But I'm you're not, not going out in public like that, though. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And and I don't even want to. I think that again, I'm just down there to work out. But to your mm-hmm. point, yes, if I go out into the city, if I'm going to to travel somewhere, then I am a lot more cognizant of of how I look. And that a lot of that, Joe, you made a really good point. A lot of that is, yeah, definitely having the the uh, mindfulness to ask questions to make sure everything that you that you wear is is presentable and it and it and it looks good but also having that that core group of people who again can like step into that space and be like ah nah this 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 one ain't gonna work but I even feel like like growing up I remember being around my family and <laughs> They may see someone else. Let's say someone else's kid or someone else's family member. Yeah. They're, they're out and about or whatnot. And, and, and they're looking like, hmm, like, who let them walk out the house looking like that? <laughs> and, and so when you hear, <laughs> when you hear things like that, it's, it's like your family understands that in a lot of ways you are an extension and a representation of yep. them. So they won't, they're not going to let you walk out looking, you know, looking out of order. Any it's, kind of it's, way. It's it's funny yeah. that you're saying that because you talk about the socks and you talk about like the uh you know just the style of when you walk out the house and because like I feel like everyone has their own style and I feel like you know when it comes you know I done helped out the my boy Joe I done hey. helped out my boy Lex and yeah. like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I want to help you out and I want to style you in a way. Where it's like, okay, this is what Markeith is wearing. I'm at, I ask you guys, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? But you already know with the socks, with certain things, for me, I'm coming out mismatched. You know, I'm, I'm the, 
I guess that's the creative space. But I want it. I want to do that to y'all because I know that that's not how you guys want to be perceived. Where oh, right. for me, it's a little bit different because it's like people all they they question. They like, hey, what's up with your socks? And I'm like, oh, that's just me. And so yeah. I'm confident in wearing the mismatch socks. I'm confident in, 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 in doing that. And then everyone just kind of knows like, yeah, Marquise, he likes socks. He like this. He like that. And that's my that's my style where y'all y'all not going to do that. Well, you might just depends, but it's about like being presentable. And I also think when it comes to the styling and just as us as people, but then us as visually impaired people just embracing ourselves at the same time. Like, you know what right, I mean? Right. So, and like you said, like that confidence piece, like you, you gotta be confident and mm-hmm. you gotta find that. I, I feel like everybody's gotta find what is it that they're confident in. And that's why I say that presentation, because for me, it was a thing of my brother was a barber. So of course, mm-hmm. man, you can't go out here with your, with your hair looking all crazy. <laughs> right. None of that. Mm-hmm. You know, you, okay, you wanna you wanna have sideburns? All right, well that can't look all you know, it can't look like you got two <laughs> pieces of bacon slapped on the side of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, them, them, yeah. You know, yeah, you know, them things gotta be crisp. So just from that constant, you know, growing up, like man, you know, make sure your hair is nice and mm-hmm. all of these things that played a huge part in it. Yeah. So when you are trying to of course you wanna build this confidence for let's say you have that that person who is visually impaired it could be a it could be a kid it could be an adult whoever and they're going through that sight loss process where they don't have that confidence and they don't have a favorable view of of themselves in terms of self-esteem and self-image how like what what can we do to help them improve that and to help change how they view themselves because per your statement earlier joe you, you know you look good feel good so we want them to to feel good, but how do we get them to see that? All right, like you are, you are this, you are that. You can, you are beautiful, you are amazing, you are confident. You can, you know, boldly walk through these through these streets and open these doors and and converse and blah 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 blah. blah. Like, how do we? I think it, I think it comes from just from what you're saying, those words of affirmation, but also just being honest and telling somebody like, man. Hey, you are, let's say there's this one field, something that they are really good at, you know, um, uh, computer programmer. I, I, that's just the first thing that comes to mind, right? You tell them like, man, this you, you are killing it. Like you are so good at this, but just keep constantly building that self-esteem and then applying one. Cause listen, man, once you get that confidence, once you feel like you are really good at something, never let anybody take that from you. So allow that that confidence to, you know, to come out of you and you're going to apply that to something else. And then you say, OK, well, what else is it I can do to help, you know, build who I am? Because you got to understand you are a brand. Right. You are the brand. You you need to represent yourself in a way that people are like, oh, you know, that that person, you know, it's kind of like what we said in an earlier episode. Be the expert in whatever it is that you're doing. Be really freaking good at it. And then, people, oh, well, you know, let me go talk to. Let me go talk to Steve over here. But then understanding, yes, you may not see how you look or you may only see a portion of how you look, but understand you, everybody else can see that. So how can you, how can you be an image that invites people in? How can you be an, an image that, that is a representation of your, your confidence and your knowledge? I, I agree. I agree with all of that. And I also think, um, like the encouragement piece, just to even go back to like the style and just like everything like that when it comes to how you dress and things like that. I think that it's about like when someone, when your family member or someone sees you and I think helping to build that like confidence is, you know, complimenting someone on their style or if, you know, you know, like, the mismatch socks thing, like, you know, mm-hmm. you might be like, hey, you know, you know, you got white and black socks on or, you know, you got this on. And, you know, the person might say, oh, I, I know. Or they may say, oh, I didn't know that, you know, and then might be able mm-hmm. to find a, a different technique to be able to, like, 
um, identify which sock is black and which sock is right, right. Which right. socks is, is like the multicolor socks because you know um, or it may be like that shirt like don't match or or it doesn't go really good with this and then you know it's just complimenting on the fact that the person tried and giving that encouragement but then also you know maybe seeing if they need assistance next time it, um, coming in some type of way of like hey if you ever want to go like shopping or styling or if you ever need like help with picking out the clothes you know I, I can't I, I'm your guy like I got you yeah yeah, yeah. Lex what does what that what does that look like for you like when you're going into the closet do you have your do you have all of your clothes and apparel situated in a way where you know you know these certain type of things are on this side are you going in there straight off of texture or you know if you have somebody help you and you know okay i'm putting these things in these drawers yeah so i just for just for the record i have man i got a whole bunch of different type of different types of clothes marquis mm. can attest to that we, oh, yeah. we were roommates but yeah yeah um because i i mean we wear workout clothes so much that when I get an opportunity to go out and actually put on some casual clothes, I'm trying to make sure that uh, I walk out the door and it's, it's, it's you know, uh, yeah, like, Lex, is, Lex is doing his thing. Um, <laughs> hey, so I feel I have, you, hey you, you can only wear joggers for so long. <laughs> exactly. So I have I have a number of my I have a lot of my nicer shirts that I hang up. And so with those. They are all, there's different indicators or identifiers, what I call them, that lets me know what color they are. So it, it could be a, a red shirt that I have with a, a polo logo on the bottom portion on the left hand side of the shirt, or mm. I may have a, you know, just a, a, a really nice gray button up with, you know, some sort of like obscure collar or something. Um, so it, there's always something that I can feel mm -hmm. that will let me know what color it is, which means that when I go shopping, I hardly ever buy the same shirt twice because that makes yeah. it hard to be able to, to distinguish if it's, if it's light blue or, or red. Um, yeah. So I really try to make sure that everything is different and everything is distinct, but I do have, <laughs> I got like these, these, these t-shirts, these black t-shirts that I wear a lot, most, mostly because when I'm just chilling in the room or if I'm just walking around, then I'll put something like that on because I'm not really stressing over yeah. going out here and, and, you know, being my absolute, uh, best from a, from a visual aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. And, um, but what I was going, when I was listening to the two of you talk, like, how does, how does someone even determine what their style is? And how do you mm -hmm. determine what your style is? You can see, so it's a little different. I'll get my perspective out there, y'all. Gonna give you a well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. For me, man, it was a, I'm not gonna say it was a hard road, but having albinism, you know, I, I'm super light sensitive. And it, so, I, anytime I go out, I gotta have a hat on. And sunglasses, but most definitely a hat, just to slow down that that light that's coming directly on coming to me. Right. So, you know, I, like I said, I'm always wearing hats. So, and then also a transition phase. You know, if I'm coming outside into inside or going uh, inside back out, you know, it takes a second for me to transition into that brighter setting or into a dimmer setting, whatever. Yeah. So I I had to realize over the years, and, and you know, some people may think this is crazy, but every hat doesn't fit an occasion. So I had to realize, okay, well, in the summertime, I need to wear more of like a uh, like a running type cap or a, uh, what they call like a dad cap, so to speak, something that's a little a little lighter on my head. Because mm -hmm. with ha with having albinism, my head, it, it, let's say if I've had like a uh, I don't know, uh, like if I sweat, right? Sometimes I get these kind of like like a heat rash or so to speak on my head. So you know that that's that's embarrassing to have that. So then right. if I have so if I have on like a regular like a fitted baseball cap or even like a snapback, that's a thicker cap. So it's gonna hold all that heat in. So then when I take it off, now my head's dripping wet with sweat. I might have like a little red patch on my head. 
So then I was like, all right, well, I need to wear, you know, these, like a like a running cap, a dry fit cap that's going to, you know, wick that sweat away. But then in the wintertime, all right, well, I can't wear this little thin hat that's not going to provide any, you know, any warmth for my, because I'm bald. I ain't going to report, you know, I ain't going to keep this bald head warm. So I, so I, yeah, you know I'm saying, so I wear, I wear a thicker, like a, like a, a fitted cap or, or maybe, you know, a, a, like a wool type snapback or something. But then right. like with wearing beanies or, or toboggans or whatever you want to call them, they provide no, you know, they provide no break from the shape. They don't have brims on them. So then it's also like, all right, well, if I wear that, then I, I, I most definitely have to wear a pair of sunglasses with. It. So it took mm-hmm. me a minute to kind of figure out my style and, and honestly, you know, you know, props to my dad. Um, he was like, you know, you don't have to wear the same hat every day. Mm. You know, you, you get a couple that are nice. You take care of them. They'll last you forever. So, mm. you know, people always laugh. They're like, man, you got so many hats because I've just kept them over the years. I try to keep them nice. But that's true. I, you know, I don't have to wear this one red cap every single day. You know, I can have a blue hat. I can wear, I can have like a, a, a black cap. So I make sure that. You know, I have something that that matches the occasion where I am. Now, sometimes I, I can't wear a hat just yeah. just because. But I try to make sure that I have at least a, a nice pair of sunglasses. You know, not no cheap gas station, but like legit nice sunglasses to wear because yeah. I need that protection. So yeah. understand that, OK, I already need this anyway. Well, that doesn't mean it doesn't have to look nice. Yeah, so that's yeah. something that, that took me a while. You know, I was probably high school, maybe honestly, probably like my junior so, senior year i really realized okay just because it's a necessity and i need it because of my visual impairment doesn't mean it has to look you know bad it didn't have to and know, like it, yeah. go ahead no go, yeah I, i'm not to cut you off and it's like when you when you're going through like middle school high school i feel like your style is it's steadily changing because you have the kids who or you had a culture right and they yeah. determine a lot of times like, OK, well, this is this is dope. This is tight, like wearing baggy jeans and mm-hmm. whatever type of shirt. And then now is, you know, wearing more of the like the skinny, skinny legs, skinny jeans, yeah, the fit. things, clothes that are like more fitted to to the body. So I yeah. feel like when you're in those younger stages, it's probably a lot more challenging. But I don't know. Marquis, he might think differently because Marquis always smooth. Oh, man, that man, man. So, hey, that so boy I was, been fly since I met him. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I think, I think style is man. That's like relative, and I think that like trying to find the style, man. Like, it's to for me. I discovered, I discovered the style is my confidence in just who I am as a person, mm-hmm. and my confidence in like my my walk, like how I walk in the room. Or whatever, because like there are many different things. Like Joe was talking about hats and glasses. Like there's accessories. There's you know Lex got uh, he uses his uh, cane. You know what I mean. And so you know he even has swag with the cane now. You know he has uh, different colors for his cane. And 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 don't get me wrong, all canes are swaggy. You know when it comes to it. But. At the end of the day, I think it's the confidence that really sets you apart. That's the first thing. And so mm. going back to that confidence and knowing whatever you have to have or wear, because like right now I got I've been wearing amber glasses. They they don't have no prescription in it, but I've had to wear like different amber glasses for my eyes getting tired. And I know back in the day, like and I'm pretty sure people still tease people about wearing glasses or like um when you're talking about style i know this isn't necessarily like a clothing item but like they uh like the mini cctvs like they have like little what are those like the little messenger bags that you can put the little small oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah Mm -hmm. yeah like you know, they don't give you no good looking bag per se, like to me, but you gotta <laughs> nah, be confident don't look good. Walk, you gotta be confident walking in the room like, yeah, this is my CCTV, you know, this is my uh magnifying glass that I'm wearing, or these are the glasses that I got on, or this is the hat, this is my cane. And so I think it starts with just the confidence within you and then like the discovering of the style and what you think yeah. you like. I think that's it come over time, like you said, middle school, yeah. high school, it changed. I know for me, 
like my style has changed, but it's literally the same. Like yeah. I used to be wearing the colorful skinny jeans. Now I'm just wearing blue and black skinny <laughs> jeans. And now I'm on like straight black, black. Yeah. I'm like on straight black tees without like all the graphics on it. Like, yeah, but yeah, it's just yeah. like, because I walk in the room knowing like, Hey, whatever, however I walk in the room, is how I'm gonna be, and you gonna talk to me. I don't mean to say it like <laughs> yeah. that, not to be, not to be cocky or anything like that, but yeah. more so just saying like, "Hey, I'm here," and whether I have my cane with me, and then people looking at that or whatever it may be, I'm my personality. My personality is like the style for me. That's how. Goes, I, that's it, how I it, come in the room. It goes back to to something we always keep touching on: is you gotta be proud of who you are first. Yep. Once, once, once you're confident in your own skin, man, yeah. what, what do they say? Uh, don't, don't let the clothes wear you. You wear the clothes or whatever. That's, mm-hmm. that's, what, that's what's going to do it. Like you said, mm-hmm. you're confident. You, you're proud of who you are. And that goes back to understanding your visual impairment. Once again, just because you, just because you have a disability doesn't mean mm-hmm. you are unable to do things. It's yeah. like Lex, man. Yeah. Lex is, Lex is swaggy. Like that man, like, Whenever I see him, he I feel like he's stunting me, and he's probably just like, "Oh, dude, I just got on clothes, man." Like, that's every day for him. And then when he put on the Jays, it's like, in like the Jordan fit and all that stuff. Like it's like, man, my man's fresh, but it's it's not necessarily because it's the Jordans, because his 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 mental game is like, "Hey, I'm here, and I got the Jordan on." You know, I got he's right. Because so. so what what made Lex like going back to Lex? Like what made you decide to put? Like the videos up on social media. You know, being from North Carolina, Michael Jordan is just phenomenal. And he is the greatest, greatest, arguably one of the greatest or the greatest athletes of all time, any sport. Right. And so the, the last dance had come on earlier this year. And, and, um, I was like, all right, well, you know, let me take this opportunity to, to record some videos and post them on social media just to talk about how I identify with with my Jordans because I, I'm man, the Jordans are like they're not just any type of shoe. It's it's like an icon. It's a it's a culture type statement, if you will. Yeah, yeah. And again, Jordan is the GOAT. And mm-hmm. um so I just wanted to get up there and and kind of educate people on how I know which Jordans are what. So you take the the retros from you know, the Jordan ones all the way up to uh, uh, however however high they go twenties. Yeah, um, I know they go up to thirty something, but once you get into them twenties, you start messing with those team Jordans. And then, yeah, you don't talk about those much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so with the retros, they all feel differently, and I was just given an inside look into how I determine what's what. So on the Jordan ones. You have the, uh, like the high top version, at least the, that's like the old school, the first Jordan that was released. So it still has the Nike check on it. And it also has the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the emblem on that yeah. higher ankle area. And then the bottom, like the sole of the shoe itself is flat also. And, um, so just really wanted to give viewers and listeners the opportunity to, to see like, Oh, okay. Well, this is how, this is how it's done. But I think even more than that, just give, giving people that insight into we have so many different things inside of our homes, people inside of our lives, whatever, whatever. And there are certain angles and certain perspectives and views that that are there that people just don't recognize. And I feel like we can do a lot more when it comes to being present, being aware, knowing what is uh what is in in front of us? I think a lot of people just look at the Jays like, oh, okay, these look dope, but in actuality, there's there's so much more to it. These people design these shoes, and they have so many different ideas and 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 aspects about them that we probably just don't even know. So similar for me, when I'm just touching the shoe, there are certain things that people probably now are able to look at them and be like. Oh man, I just recognize that my Jordans have this on the on the sole, or they have this on the on the on the toe of the shoe. Um, 
So that was really cool. And the, the even crazier thing about that is the first one, I think it was a, yeah, the first one that I posted again, I was just putting it up there to like, Hey, you know, this look like, check this out. And it ended up getting like a hundred and like 160 some odd thousand views. Uh, so that was, that was wild. My phone for a few days was just going. That boy phone was blown up. Bonkers. Hey, it's funny. It's funny you mentioning shoes. Cause man, like I know that's the, I'm like, like that's the first thing that actually got me into like fashion and shoes. Like it, that might be for every young kid or young, young guy out there or, or woman or young, young girl out there, you know, whatever. But for me, like the shoes, like I, I used to draw shoes. So I used to want to be a, a shoe designer and I still, every now and again, I, I, I'll draw a shoe and you're up there talking about the details. And I like to like draw the details on the shoe and everything like that. So I, 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 I agree like that, that you, cause you're, you were describing like how you're like feeling the details on the shoe. I yeah. think that's like an important thing like that. That sets the tone, especially for the Jays. No, when you talk about, I think somebody had mentioned the cane earlier, uh, mm -hmm. probably both of you, but when you talk about being in North Carolina, there's a thunderstorm and you're trying to walk around. Now you, you got the nice clothes on, you had the nice shoes, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. And, 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 and like, you don't want to walk into puddles. Well, at least I don't want to walk into puddles. I don't want to step into mud, any of these things. Yeah, and so yeah. that cane, the cane becomes so much more important for me because as it's mm -hmm. as it's gliding across the ground i'm i'm trying to detect if there are puddles of water and if there are any in front of me now i'm trying to figure out how do i navigate around this because i don't want to get my shoes dirty or the same thing when you're talking about mud that's the same thing like i'm not same trying thing. to step into this mud because like Man. then as we like i'm getting hype right now Man. Because the thing <laughs> is, unless, hey, right there, unless you have, <laughs> unless you have some people who are really like in your corner, in your corner, the average person is not going to tell you like, oh, oh man, you, you know, you got, you got a glob of mud on your shoes. Right? On your the shoe. average person I feel is just going to be like, oh, okay, they're blind. They, they don't know. Man, that's, that's exactly, I, that's exactly I what I was going to say. Yeah, like I would appreciate it if you would just let me know and that you tell me so that I can go into the bathroom and and get some paper towels and wipe my shoes off. Like, don't have me out there looking, you know, looking out of out of order, bro. It's funny you say that because like I actually uh I got my uh, wife some shoes, uh some blazers, um Nike blazers, and they were uh like white and orange and it had like this color in it and like these nice colors right and so she was like she uh she was asking me what should i do because she always know that i don't like like to step in stuff and she was asking me should i walk in the grass i'm like you might get grass stains because when we walk in our right. dog i'm like you probably just want to put your your converse on or, or, or some running shoes on yeah. so she's like man like which don't get me wrong she's definitely had some other like nice shoes, like nice, like looking good looking tennis shoes or whatever. But she's like, these are the first pair of like really good looking tennis shoes I've ever had. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm experienced. And <laughs> yeah, as a visually impaired person, it's the same. Like you don't, you know, you don't want your shoes dirty. You want to make sure you like, you don't scuff them up. So I remember back in the day when the Air Force ones, and I know that they, they, they pop in again. I remember everybody used to like walk a certain type of way and everything. So I think it's yeah. the same thing. Like you don't want to, you don't want to mess your clothes up. You don't want to mess up your, uh, your shoes. So I, yeah, I agree. Man, I, I feel like a lot of it, and this could just be me. I don't want people to be like, well, he, he visually impaired. He doesn't, he doesn't know he's got a stain on his shirt. Or he don't, he don't know that he got all them scuffs on his shoes or something. So I feel like I have to take even extra. More, I have to take better care of my stuff than the average person just because I don't want that to be a topic. I don't want it to be a thing. Man, he don't know. He got a rip in no. his jacket. You know, something like that. And, and, I, and I think that's the point I'm trying to get across. Yeah. Don't let being visually blind or visually impaired be a reason not to be presentable. 
And you know, like Marquis said, it's it's all about how you feel. You you feel comfortable in your own skin. You wear clothes that you want to wear, but just mm-hmm. like we keep saying, understand the spaces that you occupy. Mm-hmm. Nah, I, I definitely agree with that. And and to kind of hit on that 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 point that you had made a couple of seconds ago, the a lot of times since I don't, I can't see colors at all, and I can't see stains or anything like that on my clothes as well. So my clothes could be totally fine and I could be ironing things that probably don't need to be ironed. But for mm-hmm. me, once I do it, it's like, okay, well, I know that I'm good. Or it, like I may have to just drop some things off at the cleaners just, just to make sure that, okay, my clothes are going to be, they're going to be mm-hmm. fresh so that when I go and step on the stage or, or do whatever I'm doing yeah. that, I have the confidence in knowing that the that the clothes look good and per everybody's point on on today's episode is man your clothes are an extension of that that confidence and that self image that you already have for yourself mm-hmm. so you certainly want that to you want that to match I mean Marquis hit on it earlier when you I walk in rooms hey yeah, yeah. He said, "When I walk in the room, people don't talk to me." <laughs> yeah, when you walk in that room, people be like, "Okay." You hear people say it all the time. Oh man, like he walks into the room and like you know, you know he stepped in. Like, yeah, that's the type yeah, of energy that you that you want. It's about commanding the space and, and, and speaking about that. Like when you walk in the room, I know sometimes I'm not even gonna lie. Now, I don't, I don't think that I've ever done this when it's like I'm like maybe in a suit or something like that. But I know being visually impaired, sometimes I still miss out on certain details. And so yeah. <laughs> shirt might be on backwards. Yeah. <laughs> something might be something might be inside out or whatever. But I, normally it's like my my sports, uh, like like me training or different yeah, things like that. Right. And somebody might be like, oh, your your stuff is on backwards. And guess what I say? I'm like, oh, OK, thank you. And I move on and I go yeah. and fix it. But that confidence piece, that's the thing that I have. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, hey, it is what it is. You know, yeah. next time, let me make sure, like, how can I figure out, like, that I am don't have stuff inside out. But sometimes um, if I don't have, like, someone there to assist me, you know, maybe, you know, it might happen. And so, like I said, next time it's like, okay, like, what are some tricks that I can figure out? Like, whether it's the tag. And, you know, they got, like, the tag list. They got yeah. like the tag with stuff nowadays, and and so for me, it's actually maybe like paying attention to details, or like I've kind of like changed like those graphic tees to like more just plain shirts. Like I I look good in plain shirts, so I'm like wearing black and white, and then I let my accessories pop, so that I that I don't have to worry about something being inside out per se, right? You know. I know I've used, I've tried color identifiers a couple of times in the past and I feel like they work for some of the more, I guess the, the, the basic colors, if you will, like literally red, blue, black, grays, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But I think that the challenge, well, with the one that I had specifically, the challenge was that, I mean, nowadays you have, you have red which is the, you know, kind of like the umbrella color. And then under mm-hmm. that, you got like a hundred shades of red. So it wasn't yeah. able to really give yeah, me true. any context as to, you know, that. Like today you have obsidian and, and fuchsia and <laughs> cobalt, not like all of these <laughs> different names. Right. And, and for somebody like for me who I can't see, like I'm totally blind. I'm mm-hmm. trying to figure out, all right, man, what, what is, all right. What is dark green, light green? Oh, like, man, you, know what you got somebody. Yeah, you got somebody to tell you. Oh, this is a a hunter green. And somebody tell you this is a yes. it's a it's a grass green. I'm like, yeah, man. Because even so for I know, me, like they for, got yeah. That's I was gonna say for even for me, that's an issue with sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Well, you gonna so say like, more I, I know, like with seeing with seeing a AI, right? Like that can identify color. But it's not going to really be able to identify like dark green, light green, uh, stripe. I mean, it, it probably will say striped shirt. So, have you guys ever used C- CNAI? I have. Nah, I have, I have, nah, I haven't I used that. I know what you're talking about, though. Like, I know people 
other people with vision impairments or blind who yeah. used it. But about, and, and a lot of people, and you know, and they say, yeah, yeah, it works. But then, like the details, you know, like Lex was saying, you know, some it may tell you something's red. Well, really, it's like a it's a maroon, and you're trying to match it with something else, and it's like, well, these don't really go. But you wouldn't know right. until you till somebody else tells you how you look. Right, yo. But man, what's what's like a, a lasting? I know we're coming up on on time here. What's a lasting thing that we can leave for someone who is blind and visually impaired coming up trying to, you know, just figure out their their style or just trying to figure out life in terms of fashion and wearing clothes? And I know for me, just to kick it off, I just want everyone to know that. I, I think that you definitely should feel confident in, in how you look. And I definitely feel like you should care about the clothes that you wear. I don't, and I'm not saying that you should be out here buying up the, you know, the, the whatever type of just designer jeans are out there now and, and button ups and all these other things. But just in the sense of when you walk outside, just, you know, being, presentable and and matching and you know kind of breaking this this misconception that just because you may not be able to see yourself and see your clothes you don't you don't care um i don't think that that is that is true i think a lot of us are out here trying to you know make sure that we are are looking decent um but i also feel like again to to what we were speaking on early earlier the self-image piece is like that's that's huge and for everyone out there blind visually impaired and sighted that self-image piece is that's the game changer because once you start seeing yourself in a brighter light in a more favorable position then everything else is you know is going to be able to kind of follow a little more organically and naturally how I would leave off and I would say the confidence piece. I agree. Definitely. And I just want to use this word. It's the same thing that Lex said, but just embrace yourself, embrace who you are. And like, if when you embrace who you are, you're, you're going to be able to go into a room. You're going to be able to go outside and know, okay, like this is me. And I think that's where it starts with, with the styling piece and who you are as a person. And then those extra things will come in learning like, okay, I like this, or I like this type of fit jeans or this type of fit uh shirt or whatever it may be. Cause some people like slim fit. Some people like skinny. Some people like the, uh like loose fit or whatever it may be. And you got to be able to embrace that. Cause like if I went back to boot cut jeans right now, I would be confident in who I am and people are still going for me not to be cocky, but more of just my confidence knowing that, well, that's what I'm wearing and you know, I'm fresh. So I feel like that's the piece embracing yourself. Yeah. You gotta, I mean, long story short, just be, be figure out how do you get comfortable in your, your own skin? And then have people around you who are going to be honest and truly want to help you be better. So, you know, you might have a certain some clothes on. I ask somebody, well, hey, how do I look? Especially if you can't see yourself, that's the only way that you, you're going to get that ball rolling in the first place. Ask somebody, how do I look? And then say, OK, well, what about these colors? And then put a system together. Be strategic in, in this. You know, set your closet up, your dresser in a way or, or however you're going to have your clothes or whatever. Have a system in place so you know that. You know, these things are right here. These other things are here. You know, my, my shoes or, or whatever. But just be consistent in whatever it is. That's going to allow you to. And that's going to add to your confidence because then, you know, oh, OK, well, my my shirts are, you know, they're they're on the bottom. And then the, all, all shirts that are black are, are the first set of shirts and then the white shirts and then the green, you know, whatever. But just create something. Where you Man, know that system, where I like that. Yeah, that system create a system so you know where things are. Because I'm gonna be honest, if you look to my closet, you're gonna think you at a uh, you gonna think you at a retail store or something. Because I make sure that it's color coordinated and things are in a certain place. Because I know for me, 
if I had to go through a pile of clothes and figure out what things are, man, I'm going to be, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get frustrated. And then that's going to take away from me because then I'm going to be like, man, I just threw anything on. And right. once again, you don't want people to be like, well, you know, he, he can't see. He, he's vision impaired. He's blind. That's why he's, he, he, you know, he don't know what he's wearing. And I, I don't want, I never want anybody to say that because I've heard it said about me before and I refuse to let that happen again. So put a system in place. That's my big thing. That's huge. And I think that when you had a system, when it's time to find some things, you're not going to be, uh, you know, filling around the house, filling around the room, trying to find these things. You can easily know these are where these things are. And it reduces that amount of time that you have looking for the, for those items. So definitely got to improve that self image, embrace yourself, develop that strategy, that system. And, uh, yeah, make sure that confidence is up because everything else follows from there. So, you know, hey, that was fun. I appreciate that. Nice little yeah, conversation. That was, that, was, that was a good one. Hey, on the fashion. Hey, everybody who can see, we love how we look. Also, we care about hey, that. We, we love how we look. Let's get it. Be fresh. Be That's fresh. what I was saying. Be fresh. All right, y'all, y'all know you know what we got to do before we get off here. We need y'all to like the video, comment below, subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already subscribed. And if you have subscribed, share this video, shoot them a text, tell them check out the site school. Y'all can also follow us on Instagram at site school. Follow us, subscribe. We're going to keep pushing out content like this because, hey, we're changing the culture. So until next time, everyone, we appreciate you listening. This is a site school. We out of here teaching people to see. Peace out.